from her mission of the heavens to her eventual sainthood. Stay tuned to number one to find out 10 amazing things about Joan of Arc. Number 10. Say My Name When you hear the name Joan of Arc, you have to admit that it has a certain ring to it. That's just one of the reasons that she's so fondly remembered, because her name is actually quite iconic sounding. That's also why a bunch of media over the years have paid tribute to this name via expanding it, rewriting it in fancy ways or more, like the former CBS show Joan of Arcadia. Anyway, what you might not know is that Joan of Arc wasn't actually her name, nor did she ever personally call herself that in a professional setting. Joan is actually the translated version of her name, Johan. As for her last name, she technically had several, as she could have gone by Johan de Arc, Johan Tark, or Johan Rome, after the various members of her family or how she personally translated her own last name. After her exploits, she was put on trial in 1431. When she did, she called herself Johan la Pucelle, which translates to Joan the Maid. When asked about her last name, she said she honestly didn't even know it. If you're curious as to how Of Arc came to be her last name, that would be because of her father, whose surname was De Arc, and it went from there. So technically speaking, Joan of Arc is a fictional name. Who knew? Number 9. Why and How Was She Tried? Despite being a hero in the eyes of the French people, Joan of Arc was most definitely public enemy number one when it came to their enemy. And to their delight, they were able to get their hands on her in a roundabout sort of way. You see, during this period of time, the British had allies in the form of the Burgundians, who weren't the best of allies, but they knew who to support and how to get the most out of their allies when needed. And so, when Philip III captured Joan of Arc, they were more than willing to sell her to the British for a hefty price of a thousand livers. Wait, livers? Okay. As for why Joan of Arc was tried, it was because she was the one who turned the entire Hundred Years' War on its head. The British were dominating until Joan came along, and because of her efforts, the French started winning. And they even got their king in Charles, which changed the course of history. The price for this act was her being burned at the stake. But despite her demise, the damage had been done to the British and France lived on. Number 8. A Girl Who Hears and Sees Before we talk about what she heard and saw, take a moment to join the Zero to Hero community by using the buttons below. If you dive into the history of Joan of Arc, you'll eventually get to the part of the story where she started seeing and hearing God and angels. She even said she saw the Archangel Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret, and even heard the voice of God himself. And it was these visions that led her to go find Charles and help him expel the British from France. This all sounds insane, and yet Joan believed whatever or whoever she heard. And when she did meet the man who would be king, he put her to the test. He hid in the crowd once to see if she could be guided to him. And sure enough, even though she had never met him, she knew exactly who he was. Then he had theologians look at her to see if anything was wrong with her. Their analysis? She is who she says she is. To this day, people debate what she saw or if she saw anything at all. Some people have even claimed to know what she was diagnosed with in terms of the illness that caused her visions. But here's something you should ponder. What if it wasn't an illness? What if she really did have those visions and hear those voices? Because if she didn't, how did almost everything she predict or say come true? Number 7. The Maid of Orleans One of the most important things about Joan of Arc and the reason that many people idolize her is that she wasn't just a woman who was told to do things, she was a woman who went and did things herself. When she met with the future King Charles, she cut her hair and dressed in male armor to play the part she was meant to play. And then, at the mere age of 17, Charles allowed her to go into battle. And not only did she do so, she was on the front lines. One of the key battles she helped facilitate the victory of was the French city of Orleans. It had been under siege for a long time by the British, and they were winning this fight. But in came Joan, and she slowly but surely helped change the tide against the British. She was injured in one of the fights, 
But when it came to the final push to help clear out the city and the British defenses, she was on the front lines once more and helped her army get them out. Amazed by her skills and her faith, they named Joan the Maid of Orleans. Oh, but it should be noted that though she was on the front lines, she never killed a man. She never wanted to. She was just a symbol and a strong one at that. Number six, Joan had fire. While the obvious reports can be a bit hard to believe at times, it doesn't stray too far from who she is thought to be, to say that Joan of Arc had a legendary temper. Because while she may have been a teenager, that didn't mean that she didn't have the guts to go up against those who challenged her. In fact, those teenage hormones probably helped out a lot in that. It is said that anytime she caught one of her knights or other army leaders doing some wrong or reprehensible act, like swearing, missing mass, or something like that, she would chew them out royally. Which back then would have been a major insult and not worth taking, except she was chosen by the king to lead them, so they had to take it. This legendary temper continued all the way until her trial, when a clergyman who didn't believe her story about hearing gods and angels asked what language these deities spoke, to which she replied something along the lines of, they speak French, and they did it better than you. Oh yeah, she's got fire. Number five, the trial of Joan of Arc. I want you to think back to the old days of information and how it was kept. There were no computers, so everything had to be written down. Which is why, in the early days of civilization, the only people worthy enough of getting stuff written down about them were rulers and certain other high-class people. Joan of Arc wasn't that. She was a soldier and a symbol. And while it's fair to say that she would have some things written about her, it shouldn't have been a lot. Except she went to trial by the British, who had three notaries on scene to make sure that everything was written down and they conferred with each other regularly. So between Joan resigning her life to that point and the 115 witnesses at the trial to testify against her, they got to know a lot about St. Joan. And because of that, so did we, eventually. That trial actually made her one of the most documented people of that time period. Number four, Joan's brothers pretended she was alive. After her execution, France was crushed. After all, she was their symbol in every way that mattered. But despite the English being very thorough with what they did to her body, now seriously, look it up, they did a lot to her body to make sure she was gone. Her brothers hatched an idea. They got several women to portray her in public to keep the people's spirits up and help push things forward. And it worked for a time until King Charles himself got wind of this and demanded an answer. They weren't punished, and good thing too because it was them who convinced the Pope to look at Joan's trial and get it thrown out, which got her on the path that would end in sainthood. Number three, she was burned for dressing like a man. A common misconception about Joan of Arc is that she was executed for witchcraft, since she claimed to have heard voices from God and angels and saints. But that's actually not true. The English were more offended that a woman dressed like a man. No, for real. Eventually, Joan signed a plea deal of sorts, although some say she didn't know what she was signing, that would offer her life imprisonment if she promised not to lie about hearing voices and dressed up as a woman again. She signed it and did her part for a time, but it's said that she feared violence against her or her guards forcing themselves on her, so she put back on the male armor and told the judges, who already weren't happy with her, that she heard voices again. This is what put her on the stake to be burned. So in a way, you could say that Joan went out on her own terms. Number two, she did inspire a hairstyle. History has a way of dramatizing things to a very extreme extent, and it's really tacky at times. And while Joan of Arc did indeed have some things exaggerated about her, her hairstyle was not one of them. As noted before, she cut her hair before meeting King Charles. That hairstyle was eventually called the bob, which is just how the hair looked after she cut it. The style didn't take hold in culture though until about 1909, when a Polish hairdresser, of all things, tried to bring it to life in the modern world. It took a while, but it eventually worked, and many women, both common and high class, eventually rocked the look. 
A very popular one was Olivia Wilde, who donned the look in the movie Tron Legacy, when she noted that her character in both style and looks was inspired by Joan of Arc. Number 1. Martyr, Symbol, Saint Despite everything that Joan of Arc went through at the end of her life, her impact on France and the world at large is still felt. And though she was condemned at the time, it wouldn't take long for the wheels of history to start to honor her. Not long after her trial, the Pope declared in 1456 that her charges were false. He threw out the entire trial and declared her a martyr, or a person who died falsely in the name of her people. In the 16th century, she became a symbol of the Catholic League, and when Napoleon Bonaparte was leader of France, he declared her a symbol of the nation. Finally, in 1920, Joan of Arc became a patron saint of France, one of only nine people to ever have that honor. And of course, she's considered one of the greatest females who ever lived for breaking boundaries, sticking to her faith, and believing in the greater good. What else have you heard about Joan of Arc? Let us know in the comments below and take care.